Hello everybody, welcome back on my channel. My name is Vanessa and I make videos about music, productivity and health. In today's video, I wanted to talk about the topic which is very important to me. I wanted to talk about active stress management. I've talked about this a little bit in my other video, my mental preparation for my master's exam. And as there were so many people surprised that I do that, I wanted to talk in depth what I do and how it helped me with stressful situations. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it here. The first thing I normally do is I write down all these things and think about it. And it's first of all, you have to define the event. Um, in my example, that's now the entrance exam at the music university where you want to apply, which has always a lot of stress factors. And we want to have the most stress-free um, situation um, that we can really play how we want to play. So when you have defined this event, you have to uh, recognize your stress factors beforehand. So you have to say, okay, what could stress me in this situation? For example, um, my outfit could stress me, um, the repertoire could stress me, that I don't know where this is could stress me, that you are in a new environment could stress you, um, all these factors and you write down all the things that could stress you. You have to try to eliminate those stress factors beforehand. So, for example, if one of your stress factor is, oh, I don't know where to get food there, for example, that could be a stress factor. You can pack your lunch or food for you that you know, oh, I have enough food or enough water or that you know exactly what you're going to wear, that you know exactly the way to the music school that you know exactly um, what to do in your practice room before you go on stage, before you play for the jury. That's something that helped me a lot because I know exactly what I am supposed to do in this situation. Then you have to reflect about situations that you did in your past, for example, that were quite similar. What helped you there? What did not help you? For me, for example, I did already um, a few entrance exams. And one thing that they said to me every time was, which piece do you want to start? And the first time I never thought about this question was just like, oh, they will say with which piece I'm going to start. But the last time I did the entrance exam, I thought about this question and was thinking, oh, I feel most comfortable with this one piece. I would love to start with that if they ask me. Or sometimes they ask you when you played already a piece, oh, what piece do you want to play next? Or um, what else? So I would always have like an order in my head with like what I want to play next, what I really want to play. That just helps me um, to not like feel stressed in this decision because I made this decision beforehand. So that's something I learned from the past, for example, or I learned from the past that I want to wear this certain piece of cloth because I feel very comfortable in it. And I don't feel that I in any risk wearing that, for example. Or I also know that I would love to have a banana before I play on stage because it gives me some energy. But I know I don't want to drink so much before I'm going on stage because that's not very good with my body, for example. So you try to reflect your past and find a good new strategy for the present. And if you reflect your past and you have all your stress factors, um, you have to make precautions. So for example, if um, you have that one outfit um, and you know you want to wear that, but make a precaution that you take another outfit just in case if the like zipper breaks or something happens, that you have something else to wear and that you bring another score with you and um, just in case that you have something with you um, when you are very stressed and um, that you bring another bottle of water just in case you get very very thirsty 
um, just to have like these precautions which will let you worry less. And one thing that really helped me when you did all of this is to plan your worst case scenario. <laughs> A worst case scenario can look very differently to different people but I will tell you about my worst case scenario I had at one of my exams and it was that I played two pieces and I started my last piece and a string broke and it was a very 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 thick string which I needed in this piece constantly and the thing was that I did not make a plan beforehand for this worst case scenario because I did not think about it, how this could happen. Because of course strings can break, but I just checked the strings beforehand and was just like, oh no, and such a thick string will never break and I don't have to worry about it. And the thing was that I did not do this worst case scenario plan which basically means you make a step-by-step -step plan for the worst scenario. You need to have your step-by-step -step plan, how you will handle the situation, which includes every step you are going to do, which includes um, people that might be able to help you and things you could maybe put on other people or like things you want to do. So for example, I made a step-by-step -step plan now that it happened to me when a string breaks on stage. The first step for me is to stand up, talk to the audience, explain what happened and say this string broke. And then if possible, um, I would take another harp from backstage. But if there is no other harp, I will replace this string. I have to think about it. Do I want to replace the string on stage or backstage? But I always replace the string on stage because it's very curious for the audience to see how a string gets replaced. Then I also made a decision where to start in the piece. So when it's over the half of the piece over and the string breaks there, I'm not going to play from the beginning of the piece. I'm having several starting points in the piece where I want to start then from there. I also have in my mind um, if I have somebody who is backstage who could help me where I could just go to and say to them oh can you bring me my string um, back or could you help me to um, replace the string and um, that it's just a little bit faster and um, but that's only possible if you have a certain person with you otherwise I would do it alone. The other step would be to tune the string of course and to tune the string also between the playing to stop at certain points to tune it because otherwise you just have this string which is not in pitch at all and it's very annoying while you play. Another worst case scenario could be for example your health. Um, if you have headache or like stomach problems, I know a lot of people who have stomach problems before playing and the first step in worst case scenario of stomach problems would be for example to know which medicine helps for me which precautions do I have to take and to take these steps as soon as I feel something. I do not wait until it gets worse because normally it will not get better in like a, such a stressful situation. When I have health problems or stomach issues, I want to have a step-by-step -step guide like whom can I ask for help when I need help when do I say I'm going to play or when I'm going to say I'm not going to play on this day? So when is my deadline um, that I know exactly my deadline is here and um, this is what helps me so that I am very, very well prepared on this worst case scenario. So after you had your worst case scenario, it's very important that you don't think about, oh no, I had this worst case scenario, I am such a bad person. No, it happens to all of us. The important thing is that you reflect. For example, um, I reflected when my string broke the last time in a concert that I want to tune between um, the different sections of the piece because it was very annoying that my string was out of place. 
and that I would have taken the other harp if possible. Or when you had stomach issues, which medication helped or like which things helped me to get it better so that I'm more prepared for the next time I have this worst case scenario or I'm more prepared for the worst case scenario if it might happen just for you. You should not be angry at yourself that it happened to you, but you should learn from the situation. I hope this video was in any way helpful for you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel that you don't miss any further videos and I will see you in my next video. Bye!